Today I'd like to talk to you about the subject of kingdoms. And the question is, are you building a kingdom uh, for yourself or for the Lord? Are you working for your kingdom, for your comforts, or for the Lord's kingdom? And what he wants, what he desires. And I'm going to read a passage for you from Mark chapter 8, verse 31. And just read for a little bit and uh, think about kingdoms. Think about um, whose kingdom you're building, whose kingdom you're motivated by and you're living for. Kingdom of pleasure, kingdom of comfort, or kingdom of longevity, kingdom of peace, kingdom of material possessions, kingdom of a legacy for yourself, a name for yourself, maybe even someday having a wing in a school named after you. What are you living for? What is your kingdom that you're about? Let me read to you. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again and he said this plainly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him but turning and seeing his disciples he rebuked Peter and said get behind me Satan for you are not setting your mind on the things of God but on the things of man I can kind of see why some of the Jews have rejected the Messiah. They were looking for a reigning king to come and set up a government and rule the earth and to overthrow the Roman Empire. And Peter is saying to Jesus, no, you're not going to suffer and die. You are our Messiah. You are going to set up your kingdom. Reigning king. But he missed part of the prophecies. In Isaiah 53 and Isaiah 42, different passages in the Old Testament, it talks about a reigning king, but it also talks about a different category, and that is of a suffering servant. Jesus is a suffering servant and a reigning king. Now, if you were Jewish at this time, you would certainly want the Romans to be thrown out and you to have your nation and to do your own affairs and to follow God. And many of the Jews were looking forward to this. Peter, the disciples, were looking forward to this. But Jesus is teaching, I got something else I'm doing here. Right now, I'm a suffering servant. Right now, I'm coming to suffer. This kingdom that you desire physically is first going to come spiritually. And quite honestly, and, and theologians have tried to make it seem that Jesus is also the conquering king right now. And spiritually, yes, I agree with that. But physically, there is yet to be seen him, the Messiah, being a reigning king on earth. And he hasn't done that yet. However, spiritually, he is all over the earth. There is not a single nation right now where Jesus is not king of at least someone's heart. The gospel has gone out to every nation. People have embraced Jesus to be their king in every nation. So he reigns in some. But there is a reigning king, a government that will be upon his shoulders at some point. And Peter is wanting that kingdom to come now. And I can understand that. Wouldn't it be great if Jesus was reigning right now on the earth in love, in justice, in care, dealing with sin and, and helping people like widows and the fatherless and the needy and the refugees and things like that? Peter's missing, though, the suffering servant, and Jesus is teaching them here 
the suffering servant part of things. Verse 34 goes on in our story. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? And what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in glory in the glory of his Father and with the holy angels. Lose our life, die to self, take up your execution stake, your cross daily. Lose the whole world, gain your soul, gain him. I wanna ask you, Whose kingdom are you building? Is it wrong to have a house and fix your house and cut your grass and plant trees and, and plant a garden? And Is that stuff wrong? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe not. But what are you living for today? Are you considering, Lord, how can I build your kingdom? Lord, what do you want me to do today? Is that in your thought process? I want to challenge you with something. Ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do I need to lay down in order to follow you? How can I be a part of joining you in advancing your kingdom here on earth? It's a question of kingdoms. Whose kingdom are you about? God invites us to die. Die to our kingdom. To repent means to change direction and to start living for his agenda, for his kingdom. What are you going to do about it? Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would show us if there are any idols that we could cast down our idols to follow you. If there's any sin, um, anything like, I know for me, I like comfort and I like to have a good day. I like peace. And often, I don't ask, how can I be about your work through the power of your spirit? Often it's me saying, I just need an hour of rest. I just need this. And I'm not saying that's sinful, but often my focus is me and building for myself comfort. Father, I pray for those listening to this video that you would point out what things are getting in the way of building your kingdom. Give them and me discernment on how to get involved, how to engage, to build your kingdom in the hearts and minds of men and women and here on earth. Help us to die to ourself today that we may pick up the life of Christ through us, Lord. You invite us to live for your glory, for your agenda. And that's hard to do. 
teach us, Lord. Show us and help us to slow down and take some time during this season to consider these words in Mark chapter 8. And I pray that when we get engaged, that you give us peace and give us excitement and know what you want us to be doing. Oh, Father, help us not to waste our lives any longer. Time is short, and we want to see you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.